Oh, hi. I'm going to introduce you to a pinch pot. So, got your bag of clay. I'll show you a few of the things that are possible. You know, a very simple one. Maybe just a simple form, round. This I made a little bit thicker and carved in it and added feet to it. This has no foot. This is quite thin and made to look even thinner by thinning the lip. Almost like a flower or something you'd find under the ocean. One of the things about pinch pots is you're making them with hand, by hand. So as far as symmetry, getting it absolutely perfect, forget about it. It's possible to do, but it takes a lot of time. So what I want you to do is think organic. Think nature. It can be a closed form. It can come in on itself. There are different kinds of lips you can add. You can add things to the top. Different kinds of feet. These are a couple different ones. They don't have to be big. Here's a small one that I made the basic form and then let the outside dry a bit. And when the outside dried, I pushed it out from the inside, and by pushing it out, it stretched and cracked the surface. And this glaze changes color depending on how thick it is. So where it's thicker, it gets a different color. And I added feet to really make it a more interesting, kind of more formal thing. These are all round. They don't have to be round. This one's oval. This one is kind of oval, and it's got flat sides and lines and kind of a round foot, and you can add things to it. You're not stuck to just having it be a plain pot. If you really want to go to town, you can put two together. Not after they're fired, of course, but you make two halves, assemble them, cut an opening, and then you can have a teapot. So here's a little teapot that I made almost like a clamshell. So it's like this, two pieces like this. I paddled the bottom. You know, I assembled it, of course. I scratched and squished and blended the two pieces together. And then when it was firm, I cut this opening, added this piece to lower the center of gravity to help keep it stick, keep it on, added a handle, added the, the stirrup handle on the top, and then cut another opening and added the spout. So when you're doing a pinch piece, start off with a piece of clay. Now, pinch is really for small pieces. If you get too large, it gets really unwieldy, and there are better ways to do it. But it's good for sketching. It's good for doing small pieces. Take your bag of clay, cut a piece off, That's about the right size for me. You want something probably no larger than a good size orange. I've got a couple pieces here, but I'll, I'll just close this up. Now remember, the clay, it's got water in it. If it's left open, it gets hard. The water evaporates. It's constantly evaporating. So always, always, always keep it covered up. I've got a little lump of clay. What you want to do is get it round. That's kind of like making a snowball. Cup your hand, cup your other hand, and bang it. And turn it, and bang it. And you can go back and forth. And if you kept doing this for a very long time, you'd have a perfect sphere. 
Don't do that because remember the water's in there, it evaporates, and the heat of your hand will help it evaporate too. So the clay's going to get drier and drier and drier the longer you work it and the longer it's out in the air. So, to make a pinch pot, it's like slow motion throwing. You open it, you thin the walls, you shape it, you refine it, you add things to it, and do things at different stages. So this stage is called the plastic stage. See how you can roll it between your hands and bend it, and it makes just a nice, hmm, doesn't crack. You can always just bang it back together. So for the pinch pot, start by making a little indentation with your thumb. So you start by pushing down a little bit. And then you keep pushing down and keep pushing down, and keep pushing down until you get it to about a quarter of an inch thick. Some people like to carve a foot in the bottom, so you'd leave more clay there. But remember, with clay, there's water in it. There's even water in it after it's dry. And when you fire it, when you put it in the kiln, that water turns to steam. And if that steam can't get out, say the piece is too thick, it, the steam does get out. It just blows this piece apart. So keep your pieces no thicker than a quarter of an inch. Sometimes you can get away with as much as half an inch. And there are ways to do that, but keep it even. That keeps things from cracking. If it's thick and thin, it will dry unevenly and possibly set up stresses and crack. And keep it an even quarter inch thickness. Now you can go thinner. Just don't go really thick. Certainly don't go an inch. So what I'm doing is I'm, I went down to the bottom. I put my fingers and I felt I've got about a quarter of an inch down there. And then I started pinching right at the bottom. Now, it's very easy to get the clay to go out. It's hard to get it to go back in. So here's a tip. Keep it in. And then to thin the walls, I can reach all the way down to the bottom now. It's going to get quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to thin it at the bottom first and then move up a little bit and then move up a little bit and then move up a little bit till that wall is even all the way up. And as I'm doing it, I'm constantly turning it. So I'm pinching, turn, pinch, turn, pinch, turn, pinch, turn. Your hands may get a little tired doing this, but it's, it's good for you. It gives you good, strong hands. And it's really my fingertips. I'm not using my whole hand. You don't want to go too fast. You want to do it gradually so you retain control over it. So, pinch turn, pinch turn, pinch turn, pinch turn. See how it's getting a little taller? It's turning it and pinching it. Turning it and pinching it, keeping this opening. Now I'm getting a little cracking there. It's a little dry there. Don't panic. All you need to do is just push it back together. And if the crack's going this way, you push it across the crack and smear that clay back together. I'm going all the way around a lot of times. So it's I'm starting at the bottom, going around and around and around, then up a little bit, and then up a little bit, and then up a little bit. Now, uh, you decide what you want to do. You may want to have an open form like this. So once you have the wall the right thickness, then you can start stretching it out. You want a closed form like this, 
just keep it in. And then you can also pinch it in a little bit more. And if you leave that top edge a little bit on the thick side, you'll have some clay to work with. Just going around and around and trying to develop a form. Now once you have the walls at an even thickness, you can thin it out even more by stretching it out. Put it in the palm of your hand and push it out into your other hand with your fingertip. This is how I did this pot with the texture. I stretched it out, but I waited till the surface was kind of dry. And by stretching it out, it thinned it at the same time. Now at this point, I've got a basic form. I'm going to flatten that top a little bit. Got it coming in. Kind of like that the way it comes in. The walls are fairly even, and I have my finger marks all over it. That can be very nice. You may want to keep those. You may want to exaggerate it. At this point, when the clay is plastic, you can press anything you want into that clay, and it'll leave a permanent mark. So, say I wanted triangles, why well, draw it in? Just press it in. If I want lines, I can press lines into it. If I'm impatient, I can use the edge of the stick and just tap away like that, like that. Experiment. Try different things and see what they do. You know, you have official pottery tools that you could use. They do all kinds of marks. And you've got your hands. And you may have some things, you know, in your kitchen drawer or your garage that might have some interesting, make interesting marks. Play with it. So, I'm just stretching it out and thinning it. At this stage, you can paddle it. Clay likes to be beat up. It likes to be hit because it compresses the clay particles, which helps keep it from cracking. So, I can come around and paddle it. I want a flat bottom, just paddle the bottom. Now you'll find it may get kind of floppy. If it does, put it aside, leave it alone, let it firm up. When it firms up, keep working. It'll hold its shape after a little while. Now, say you don't want all those marks. Take your metal rib and bend it and scrape it. It's almost like buttering it. See, it refines that shape and makes it nicer. Now, if you don't have a metal rib like this, most people have a gift card, a credit card that they can use. Same thing. Now when you're making pots, think about the inside. The inside of the form decides what the outside's going to look like. So, this is square. It's not going to do a good job on the inside. So what I did is I took another one, a pair of scissors, and cut it. Smoothed off the side with a little sandpaper, and now I have a small rib that I can put inside and shape the inside. That's how you can get a really smooth interior. You may notice I'm not using any water. You don't need it. 
If you use water, too much water, it, the clay starts absorbing. It's almost like a really dense, dense sponge. So you start adding water, it'll get softer. It'll get slimier. And those clay particles, instead of being together like that, will be pushed apart with water. When it dries, they don't come back together. There's a gap there, and you can get cracking if you put too much water on the piece. A little bit, that's okay. So you take a little bit of water, put it on there, and then go over it with the rib. That's if you want a really smooth surface. Now look what happened. I have almost liquid clay. This is called slip. This is what you're going to be use, using to join pieces together with. What you don't want to do is take your sponge and water and sponge and sponge and sponge and sponge. Because this clay isn't just clay. It's got other materials in it. It's got this material called grog, which is fired clay. And they're like little rocks. They help the clay dry evenly. They help it keep from cracking. And if you sponge away, what's going to happen is you're going to sponge away the clay. See, there's the slip. There's the clay. And you'll end up with a rough surface. To fix that, just go over it. with your rib. Now I kind of like the organic quality of that opening. If you don't, you can cut it with a needle tool. You can cut it with a knife. That's up to you. So I'm going to let this sit, and then I'll add feet to it, and maybe do some carving on this particular one. I need to let it firm up. Now, remember, if you are going to leave it overnight, a period of time without control, make sure you cover it up. and wrap it up. This is cleaner's bag. Now, if you want it to dry some, put it on a board that doesn't have any finish on it, and then wrap it up. The board's going to suck the water out of the piece, but it's going to dry evenly. And it'll be hard, uh, leather hard, so you can add feet, carve on it. You just won't be able to change the shape. It won't be plastic anymore. It's going to go to that leather hard stage. So leave that alone. Come back to it. And I'll give you another video on the finishing of these. Thank you.